Hello, everybody. Jim here, and hey, check this out. Uh, we're going for a nice leisurely walk in Shinjuku uh, on what was kind of an overcast day and possibly the windiest day in the history of human existence. It's actually still super windy now. Like, you might, as I'm recording this video, you might actually hear, like, just the wind howling outside my window. Um, but we're taking a walk here in Shinjuku. We're actually gonna... Ask one of my favorite places to go, Wendy's over there, aka uh, Wendy's First Kitchen here in Japan. In case you didn't know, there is Wendy's in Japan, and it merged with another restaurant chain called First Kitchen. So we actually have Wendy's First Kitchen. So they serve all those delicious Wendy's burgers, and they also serve like spaghetti and stuff. So I don't know, it's kind of weird. Um, but I was uh, in Shinjuku today for. You know, various things, uh, a little business, a little pleasure, but uh, I decided to stop in here, this big old building, uh, because there's a book off in here that I wanted to go to that I don't think I'd been here in quite a long time, and hey, don't you just love that fluorescent lighting? I sure do, uh, um, as it, uh, nice and, and blinky and blinding, uh, that's one of the things for, like, shooting with this camera, if it's not set to 50 hertz, all the, all the fluorescent lights, um, kind of blink like that but uh here we are inside of the book off and we are gonna get started with a whole bunch of switch games which um i really primarily when i go looking for games i want to find some retro games and they had some here but we'll get to that in a minute uh but you know i'm a, a switch owner an avid switch player as well uh, here we have uh, Xenoblade Chronicle 3, and then there's just a whole bunch of Xenoblade uh, uh, copies of Xenoblade there. Very popular title indeed. Uh, here I am, being a clumsy idiot, fumbling with these. Take it from the side, Jim. Come on. Uh, what's wrong with you? Uh, what is this? Uh, Sword Arts Online? Uh, not a series I'm too familiar with. This is the, something you're going to notice with me. It's kind of a you know, a running trend here. Uh, a lot of the, the games, hey, Diablo, I know Diablo at least, um, and Dragon Quest Treasures, uh, that's cool, I think, uh, is, is it Treasure or Treasure Hunters? I haven't played it yet, uh, I want to though, it looks fun, uh, I am a Dragon Quest fan, I did really like Dragon Quest XI, great game, so I could try that, I like those characters, uh, Eric and his sister, whatever her name was, uh, I forget, and there's some Dragon Quest X there. Which uh, I've never played, but uh, okay. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, Switch stuff. There's a lot of stuff on the Switch I'm not too terribly familiar with. Because I mostly use it to play um, some first party stuff. And then a whole lot of like retro style shoot 'em ups and beat 'em ups and fighting games and game collections and stuff like that. So the newer stuff, the newer RPGs and things. Stuff like a Sword Art Online, I'm not going to know. Uh, what the hell that is. The the Hong Kong Massacre. Uh, a game I've heard of. Uh, it looks cool. I haven't played it yet. It looks like a like a top-down run and gun. Something I'd be really into. Um, I didn't pick it up today, but uh, it's kind of on my uh, my short want list of Switch games. And then some Des Gaia as well, which I have not played a Des Gaia game in like... Uh, it feels like 20 years or something. Uh, Live Alive or Live Alive, however. And, uh, this one, what am I looking at? Uh, what is this? Alice Gear Igus? Is that what it says? Alice Gear Igus? It's got a bunch of waifus on it and stuff. This, this is labeled as the action section. Uh, if you can read Katakana, it helps. Uh, and here we have some, it's Demon Slayer in English. What is it? Kimetsu no Yaiba? Which is a show I've never seen um, but I understand it's quite popular, and uh, I've heard that the game is actually pretty cool, too. Again, another one I've yet to play, some One Piece, and this, kind of shocking to me, Zelda Breath of the Wild 5982. That's like the cost of, like, a brand new game. It's, 
That game is like six years old at this point. And then uh, Skyward Sword HD 3619. That's a more recent release. And they have fewer copies of it. And it's it's more. It costs more. I don't understand the pricing on that. Why is Breath of the Wild still like a $50 game? It should be like 20 bucks at this point. Uh, Battle Axe. This is another one that looks really cool. Um, this particular uh, company... Uh, they also did, uh, I believe, Xeno Crisis and uh, Final Vendetta, which I absolutely loved. So I, uh, I want to play Battle Axe uh, fairly soon. Again, didn't pick it up today because I wasn't really here for Switch games. I wanted to buy some of the retro games they have. Fates, I've only played one Fate game, and that was the fighting game. And we've got some Hoshino Kirby. What does that say? There's Glare, Star something or other. They're all Star something, isn't it, with Kirby? Um, yeah, I was kind of like in the mood for retro like I want to pick up retro games So uh, I came here like to browse. I'm window shopping kind of the switch games and then um, The other was it Kirby something or other world. I haven't played any of the new Kirby games, so I don't know they look fun uh, actually the new um, Something return to dreamland. Uh, I still really want to play that just came out and mr. Driller uh, which is always a good time. I think the only Mr. Driller... Oh, no, I think I've played Mr. Driller on Dreamcast and on the GameCube back in the day. Metroid Dread, uh, which I've still yet to play. I'm not exactly the hugest, like, Metroid band, uh, fan ever. And Metallic Child. I have no idea what the hell that is either. Uh, but it does look... Uh, pretty interesting. That's the thing with uh, with me and the Switch. I always discover stuff I, I never heard of before uh, Because this like I said despite having a Switch for a few years now. I mostly only play like um, Yeah, shoot em ups beat em ups things like that. But there's Jojo's Bizarre Adventure my hero academia Which is another like anime series. I've never seen this thing keeps smacking me in the head uh, This and it happened to a few other people too I noticed so those things are really obtrusive uh, and then we just got a whole lot more um, Including robotic something or other. I can't really see this out robotic robotic notes. Is that what it says? Um, no idea you'd have to tell me that's in the simulation section as it's labeled and we got some other stuff here Including some Mario some Mario it looks like some tennis Mario Kart 8, which is still also like 50 bucks. How can that still be that uh, expensive? And then something here. No idea what the hell it is. I just pulled it off the shelf just as an example of the kind of games I come across a lot. And I don't know what the hell they are because they're like these, again, these like waifu games. Because that's a phrase now, right? That uh, Or that's been a, like a popular phrase for a while. You got to excuse me. I've been in Japan so long that like some of the stuff like goes like straight over my head. Like the... Um, Kind of like the meme stuff that is like carried over into like uh, English speaking circles. Uh, we got a bunch of PS4, PS Vita stuff, excuse me, um, which is a console I know nothing about because I've never played a Vita before in my life. Uh, like I said, I was here trying desperately to find some retro games, although Dragon Quest builders and stuff, like if it says Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy, yeah, I'll know what that is. And then same thing goes for like DS, 3DS. Um, a lot of that's it's I have no idea. There's a Hatsune Miku and a, a Doraemon and a Dragon Ball Z <laughs> And that's like that's the extent of my knowledge on those things um, But as I slip past here because this place was it was getting a little crowded actually while I was there middle of a, a Weekday and I guess a lot of people had some free time on their hands like I did uh, we got some ps2 games here I didn't bother looking like through like everything because uh, you, if you see this little label right here, that's uh, it's fighting games, baby. Kink uh, something or other. Uh, so that's what I like a lot. Uh, so we got some Hypa Street Fighter 2. That's like 20 bucks, not so bad. And 1500 yen, Capcom vs. SNK 2. An absolutely fantastic game. Love it a lot. Gun Griffin Blaze does not belong in a fighting game section, by the way. Uh, but we got a whole bunch of King of Fighters games, which is nice. I've been a King of Fighters fan since I was like 10 years old, maybe. And uh, the Fatal Fury Collection 1, which is Fatal Fury 1, 2, Special, and Fatal Fury 3. And then Mark of the Wolves, which is 3200. And that's just Mark of the Wolves by itself. But really, when you have Mark of the Wolves, do you need any other games? 
and also some samurai spirits that's always nice a little bit of tech in for you and some other things transformers dragon ball z sparking 1500 and then fate unlimited codes for 1500 that's actually uh i want to say like 500 yen more than the last time i came across that game at like a hard off in west tokyo so i guess maybe uh the prices are a little bit higher if you're uh, in central tokyo that little sign i just showed you retro always look for that uh, if you're not familiar with japanese at all just look for those three little katakana retoro uh, as we got some retro games here but they were in these like little bins and it was kind of annoying like up high like but there's like galaga and fantasy zone that's all really cool but i didn't feel like you know taking all these little uh bins like off the shelf and stuff plus i got one hand free i've got the the camera in the other hand my little gopro but we got some kind of cool stuff here most of this though like you can see like soccer games and things like that who really cares uh nobody went really uh well i'm not, i say nobody i'm really me but i'm not uh, the biggest soccer fan 270 though for fatal free special that's a good deal so i'm actually going to set that aside uh, because that came home with me today uh we got some other stuff here space invaders which is cool kirby bowl which i think is called kirby's dream course some super mario kart some dragon ball z and then shock of all shocks more old soccer games you can get for like 100 yen uh, i think i'm like moving out of someone's way or something um some n64 games they had loose cards here i think they had a few box that we could take a look at later but they got like banjo kazooie star fox paper mario which is cool and uh what where what are we doing come on it's it, it was cramped there were like a lot of people like directly behind me digging through cds it's kind of hard to move uh super Puyo Puyo 1500 though um again that's more expensive than i found at like uh sort of like west tokyo stuff uh, Central Tokyo prices tend to be a little bit higher and this though I was very happy to find 2700 for a complete copy of pop and twin uh, And man, it was in really good condition and they had two copies as well So that I kind of uh, left peeking out of the shelf so I could come back and get it later when I was ready to uh, Pick up some stuff to do my shopping um, Actually a bunch of these were in like fantastic condition like surprisingly good condition actually uh, 2300 for Dragon Quest 6, which is a good game, not my favorite uh, DQ game. I actually prefer Dragon Quest 5. Um, that game is splendid. Uh, here's something pretty cool. Uh, this is Cosmo Gang The Puzzle. And uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a puzzle game featuring these little characters called the Cosmo Gang. And they're almost like little... Um, I guess kind of like little uh, not not uh, like galaga kind of like galaga characters or galaxian guys in fact they have another game called uh, cosmo gang the video which is plays pretty much just like galaga uh, we got some super donkey kong 2 for 900 yen and that's a good deal on that and uh, we had a handful of xbox 360 games i took a quick look though uh, it wasn't really anything blowing my skirt up 360 game we weren't gonna find any like uh, cave shooters or anything here. Uh, this I thought was cool though. Same Game. It looks like same game, but it's pronounced Same Game. Looks like almost like a little party or puzzle game featuring Hudson Soft characters. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. I had never come across that before, so I was kind of uh, not sure what it was. And now I'm dipping and dodging out of people's way. You can see all the feet. Too many damn people in here. It's getting cramped. Feeling claustrophobic. Choo Choo Rocket on the GBA very cool game i like choo choo rocket on the dreamcast at least and for 2700 this is a little high actually but we got ike ike neketsu hakibu which i was uh delighted to find i didn't expect to find any boxed famicom games here uh but they had a few and then this uh surprisingly this was like almost mint condition on this but a complete copy of hoshino kirby uh for 4500 yen and it seems a little high but the the condition the box was in uh made you feel like it would probably be worth it uh 2700 for dragon quest 4 and then this wario no mori aka wario's woods for 1800 and this one was also in just like really really good condition uh shockingly good condition as a matter of fact 
And then right back here, we have a bunch of these Namco games and these nifty clamshell cases, including Dragon Spirit for 2700 and it's complete. And it looked to be in fine shape, too, so I was very happy to come across that. So I set that aside as well. Uh, anyway, uh, that's pretty much that's going to do it for this. This was kind of like a little side quest game hunt, so I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble on. I need to go get a basket by these games, though. So see you later. Goodbye! Hello everybody, Jim here, and let's round this corner. <gasps> oh my god, it's a book off! There's always another book off. You turn a corner in this town, there's a book off. Um, in the neighborhood of Kichijoji today, I was actually here to go to a hard off. Uh, you may have seen that video already, but when I noticed there was a book off nearby as well, uh, I figured, hey, you know, why the hell not? Always got time for a book off. It's, um, there's always room for, uh, Jell-O, right? There's always room for Jell-O, <laughs> there's always room for a book off. Actually, as you can see here, um, they actually had more games here than they had at that hard off. The hard off was disappointing, but look at all these boxed Super Famicom games. So we're gonna take a look at some, starting with Kirby Bowl, which I think Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's called Kirby's Dream Course in uh, North America, at least. Here is the fourth Gambare Goemon game. It's 4,500 yen, uh, which is not cheap. And then uh, right here, I can actually <laughs> remember what my thought process was. I was like, hey, I wonder if this would make for a good thumbnail. Uh, so yeah, just hold that shot longer, Jim. Um, but that's, you know, cool game, but a little overpriced. The prices here were kind of like... Weirdly all over the place, but I guess that's kind of typical for Book Off. Another 4500 for Gambare Goemon 2. Again, that's too much. But then some of the other games I find in here are right on the money or like way cheaper than they would be elsewhere. Um, this, one of the Great Battle games, it's like a Great Battle Gaiden kind of thing. If you don't know, Great Battle has like Chibi, Ultraman, and Gundam and stuff. Those are... Uh, uh, pretty fun, pretty uh, pretty good series of games. Chrono Trigger, a lovely box, lovely artwork there. Uh, Twenty three hundred yen, which um, man, that's something I <laughs> like. I hate to be like the old guy in the room, but like back in the day when I first started doing this stuff, you could find that same game, same box, everything for like three hundred yen. Uh, Garo Densetsu two, fifteen hundred. That's not too bad for boxed and in nice condition, the way it is. And uh, again, gotta love that artwork. I like the back uh, as well. Very simple. Uh, I set that down there because that was a buy. I was certainly going to buy that. But uh, let's continue perusing, shall we? We got some Super Bomberman 3, 2300. And that's a no-go. That's a little too much there. And Super Bomberman 4, 2700. Again, that's like Super Potato Mandarake level prices, so I don't go to book off for that. 900 though for a uh, boxed, um, uh, what is it, Na uh, Nazo uh, Puyo, Super Nazo Puyo, uh, one of the Puyo Puyo games. So 900 for that is good, so that's another buy. And uh, what are we looking at, Jim? We got some boxed N64 games, not very many though. Smash Brothers, I just like uh, the cover art. I like the little comic panel kind of cover art there, but 1800 yen. No, thank you. I'm, I'm nev never really in the market for N64 games anyway. Don't get a lot of requests for that. 4500 for Rockman X2. That's not so great. And then 1500 for Yu Yu Hakusho 2, which is like typically one of the cheaper games on the Super Famicom, so I had to pass on that, but. Uh, 1500 for a complete copy of Final Fight 2. That is actually a pretty good deal. It's in good condition. So we're setting that aside. We're picking that up today. What else we got? We got some Fire Emblem. We got some Panel de Pon. Complete, good condition, 1500 yen. Uh, I think uh, the first, uh, the lead up to the Tetris attack. Uh, 
Tetris Attack. I think Tetris Attack was the sequel. Here we have one of these um, like little multi carts. It's got like super like Chinese world and something or other. Uh, I'm not too keen on those. But we got a bunch of box Super Mario Worlds and they're like 1800. It's a bit much. That game is like really common. We've got some Saint Seiya games here. And Magical Taruru Tokun for 900 yen. That's cool. Um, and all these games are like, it's kind of cute that they have them sort of color coded. Uh, so we got some Captain Tsubasa, just a bunch of red cartridges, including some Kinikuman 480, which I'm not, I don't recall which Kinikuman game that is. We got some Jaja Marukun for 900 yen for a loose cart. Nah, that's a little much. I'd. I'd rather see that for like 500 yen, so that's a pass. Uh, we got some bowling, some other various things. But yeah, kind of cute they color-coded them. Pretty much all the white cartridges are either going to be, yeah, Dr. Mario or Final Fantasy. Some of these are super clean, though. Very whitey-white, um, so that's nice. I like a nice clean cartridge. Uh, and then a bunch of these Dragon Ball Z games. You could always tell these sort of like Bandai games. They have like those ridges on the side of the uh, the cartridge, um, but that's all good. We've got some of the Kunio Kun games here. Uh, this one I can never remember the full title because it's so long. But it's Downtown Special. It's kind of like River City Ransom, but set in medieval Japan. Uh, we got Ike Ike Neketsu Hakibu, which I've talked too much about that game, but I find it everywhere. It's so common and it's so cheap. There's Gyrodyne. There's Star Luster. Uh, this I think I ended up grabbing Hokuto no Ken 2 for uh, 480 yen. Uh, Hokuto no Ken 2, the uh, I think that one was just released in uh, North America at least as just Fist of the North Star. Um, it's a fun little game, not too bad. Uh, one of the Wagyan games, no idea what the hell those are, and then a whole lot of Tetris. And uh, this, this is actually. Um, a uh, pretty cool game. It's what is it? Uh, Sugoro uh, Sugoro Quest, I think is what it's called. It's kind of like, um, if I recall correctly, it plays out kind of like a little board game uh, RPG adventure kind of thing, uh, made by uh, Technos Japan. Dragon Ball for 480, aka Dragon Power, uh, which is okay in its own right. Whole lot of loose Super Famicom stuff here. 1500 for Rockman X2. We got some lemmings for 900. This is always the worst part of any game hunt for me, is when I have to look at uh, games on the bottom shelf. I myself, standing at uh, six foot one, and uh, having a little bit of wear and tear on my back and legs, it makes it so difficult for me. Uh, we got some Cho Makaimura, some super ghouls and ghosts. So some pretty cool stuff there. Uh, a few classics, if you will. Uh, but we just got so much more loose Super Famicom. More of these, um, this has some 8-bit stuff in it. So there's Jaja Marukun, some other, some other games in there. And they have one of those, like, uh, Femi, whatever, one of those knockoff Famicom things. Uh, this is pretty cool, complete copy of Aladdin, but it's, uh, it's 2,900 yen. Uh, I could, uh, maybe do without that. And then Arkanoid, uh, whatever... The Super Famicom, the subtitle is something or other, but uh, Arkanoid games, you know, those are fun. 1800 yen, though. Eh, I don't know. When I'm in a book off, I tend to be a little bit choosier about prices on things. Tiny Toon Adventures, it's 4500 yen, and um, but it's complete, you know, that's usually a little bit more expensive, though, but I did pass on that today, even though I do really like that game. Uh, nice, uh, fun side-scrolling platformer. We got a bunch of Rockman games here. You know I love it. We got X4, X6, uh, and then we got the Complete Works games. And we can just marvel at some of this really nice cover art. There's six, five, which is beautiful. I love that aquamarine color scheme. Rockman four, more beautiful artwork. Two, really great. And then the original Rockman at 1800 yen. That's really nice, very nice. And then this, dun da da da, cha ching, fifteen hundred yen for Raiden Project. Yes, please. That is a definite buy. That's a good deal on that. Uh, so as you can see, prices were like kind of unpredictable. Some stuff was like absolutely not. That's too expensive. And then some stuff was like, all right, let's do it. But we got some Puyo Puyo, some pop, uh, popping music. 
I feel like I have enough Puyo Puyo games though, like, I send those out like crazy. Let's give Puyo Puyo a break. We what we got, uh, what do we got here? Some NBA Jam! Uh, an old favorite of mine. Um, I do really like NBA Jam. I did play that game a lot as a kid, specifically the Super Famicom version. Some Street Fighter, some Mario Kart, some Donkey Kong, some Dragon Ball Z, and uh, this one, one of the uh, RPGs, I believe. Those would have been fun to have back in the day. And then Loose Chrono Trigger, 270 yen. That's more like it. That's like $2. And that's right on the money because that game is so incredibly common to come by. We got some more stuff here, including a copy of Sailor Moon for 900 yen. That is actually a good deal on that game. Bam. You're going home with me, Sailor Moon, whether you like it or not. <laughs> what? That sounds odd, doesn't it? But there's some Yu Yu Hakusho in there, some Seiken Densetsu too. I'm kind of looking surface level stuff. Uh, again, I'm bending down to look at all this. I'm literally squatting and... Oh, my knees, my back. Oh, old man Jim. 270 for Ranma one half. Ranma Nibun no Ichi, yes, I'll take that. That's a buy as well. What else we got in there? Some more Mario, some Zelda. That's all real nice. And another X2, this one 1950. So actually like 400 yen more than the other one. For reasons unbeknownst to me, now we're gonna look at some PS2. And they did actually have some cool stuff here. Um, we got this Sega Ages Dragon Force. That's kind of cool. Uh, I appreciated that at least in this place they did separate their games by genre. So when we look at the uh, fighting section, we're going to see just a whole bunch of fighting games. And that's not what that is. That's something I'm not sure what it is. Puyo Puyo Fever. That's cool. They didn't have very many puzzle games there. And then some other stuff. But then Wii. I never, ever, ever look at Wii games because no one ever requests them. But, uh... There's some cool stuff on there, some Sengoku Basara, Sonic Colors, which uh, I think most people know is a pretty great game, and then one of those other Sonics, I gotta admit, I did not play most of those like 3D Sonic games. I played like Sonic Colors, uh, Sonic Unleashed, and Sonic Generations. Other than that, I have no idea. Got some fighting games here though, we got some King of Fighters, some Street Fighter EX3, we got Arcana Hearts. And that's only 1,100 yen, and that is a good deal actually on our Arcana Heart, so I went ahead and picked that up. Uh, we got some Third Strike, always nice. Who doesn't like Third Strike? One of the best 2D fighters ever made, if you ask me. But let's continue to peruse these fighting games because they did have some more good stuff. Uh, we got some Virtua Fighter 4, Fate, Unlimited Codes. 900 yen, that's a buy. And then another copy of Fate. Uh, kind of like the Greatest Hits uh, version there. So I got both copies of Fate. Damn good game. And then the Art of Fighting Collection. So I got two copies of Fate Unlimited Codes. Great game, by the way, if you've never played it. Uh, some really good, some fun 3D fighters. So that's good stuff. And that's really good prices on those. 900 yen, that's about like seven bucks. So that's going home with me. So here's all the stuff I'm picking up today. We got Final Fight 2, we got Panel de Pon, we got Fatal Fury 2, Hokuto no Ken 2, Nazo Puyo. That's all good stuff. We got Ranma, we got Sailor Moon, we got Raiden Project, we got Fate Unlimited Codes, and Arcana Heart. And uh, that's that's it. And I'm really happy uh, I stopped in this book off. So hope you enjoyed watching. I'll see you on the next one. Everybody, goodbye. Everybody, Jim here, and check this out, a beautiful sunny day, why not go to the laundromat? No, we're not going to a laundromat, we are going to go and look for some retro games. I was in the neighborhood of Hamura today, uh, my old stomping grounds, I was here to go to the Hard Off, kind of my, uh, 
my old standby hard off but every time I'm here which is typically like once a year uh, you know I've got to stop here uh, long time viewers of the channel will recognize this hobby off because when I first started my channel like long time ago 11 12 years ago uh, I used to be coming to this hobby off quite a lot uh, so let's do some game hunting have some fun starting with Game Boy uh, and they had quite a few of these, including some Kirby Pinball, uh, Super Mario Land, some Hamtaro, if you're a Hamtaro fan, uh, Twinby, and Wario Land, all the good stuff, and a whole lot more. Uh, I tried to keep this video a little short today, so I did uh, kind of like my video hunt and then my proper combing through everything hunt later. This case had some cool stuff and it's super EDF. Uh, Ninja Warriors again, amazing game, Final Fight Tough, Super Back to the Future 2, Ninja Gaiden Trilogy, Super Star Wars, Yogi Bear, which I've, I've never played, and they had Hyper Dimension in there, Dragon Ball Z, even though it's not really a very rare or expensive game, complete copy of Airwolf, uh, Calling All Jan Michael Vincents, even some cool Famicom disc. Uh, Rocket Knight Adventures, 11,000 yen. That's in the neighborhood of like $90. Some Neo Geo CD, a little bit of PC Engine, and some more Game Boy, some Contra, some Rockman World, some of the stuff they thought was, uh, I guess, a little more valuable than what they had just hanging on the racks. And we had some consoles here, although not very many consoles. And this caught my eye. Now they're using this little advert, this little... Uh, character here I saw in like a different heart off somewhere um, this Neo Geo CD box uh, it's it's telling me uh, to go ask the staff about it because it wasn't priced and there was no console inside it was just an empty box but we got that DOA Xbox and uh, the connect Star Wars Xbox 360 27 5 for that so that's like I don't know the neighborhood of 240 bucks maybe so there you go, and then a whole bunch of boxes up here for consoles. Again, asking you to go and have a look at the staff because the consoles are not actually in the boxes themselves. But we got some PS2 games here, and I like how they just have them nicely displayed like this. Uh, it suits my purposes really well. We got some Blood Will Tell, King of Fighters, uh, some Kingdom Hearts, Pop and Music, all that good stuff. Even though I'm not a huge Pop and Music fan or Kingdom Hearts really I think I've played through the first Kingdom Hearts game and that's it I've never played any of the sequels but I did really enjoy the first game um, what else we got here we got some uh, I guess they got some PS ones on hand and Wii's so that's nice uh, we got a bunch of the Devil May Cry games here some drum mania DDR max some DBZ uh, sparking meteor uh, for 1,200 yen, that's 13, what, 1320 after tax. And with the new, uh, Tenkaichi Budokai 4 coming out, uh, that's gonna be something to get hyped for. I was a big fan of that series back when they were new. Uh, they were fun, they gave you kind of the, uh, the Dragon Ball Z experience, right? Flying around a big old open battlefield. Fantavision. Uh, not the orange kind, mind you. And uh, some Let's Burabo Nantoka. Uh, it's a, a sequel uh, to, um, uh, what was it, Mad Maestro? They made a second Mad Maestro, Phantom Kingdom, Metal Gear Solid, Medal of Honor, which I don't like. I've never liked competitive first-person shooters. Like, after, like, Doom and Wolfenstein and maybe a few other... Uh, F early FPS games. I gave up on the genre. I didn't have fun with them anymore. Uh, R-Type R-Type 4. R4 Ridge Racer Type 4. Uh, one of my favorite racing games ever. And Ace Combat 3. The first Ace Combat game I played. And uh, really loved it. We got some Intelligent Cube and Intelligent Cube Final, which I was informed that IQ Final I thought it was a Japan exclusive, but I think someone told me it was actually re released in, in PAL. Uh, not 100% sure. Uh, Wizard, what the hell is that? Wizard Memory or something? Don't know what that is. The original Ace Combat. And then some more stuff. What does this say? Uh, Punch Diet? 
Punchy Diet. I, I, judging by the back, I, it looks like it's meant to be played with a peripheral. Punch the Diet. Maybe it's meant to help you lose some weight? I don't know. Kind of the, the ring fit of its day, except you're punching. That's supposed to be good exercise, right? Boxing and stuff like that. Carnage Heart. And what else? Oh, Gun Bullet. Whatever. Uh, Light Gun Game by Namco. Another one that I can't recall if it had, like, an international release or not. And they had some of the Cool Borders games. They had Cool Borders, Cool Borders 4, Cool Borders 3, and Cool Borders 3 again, and then Gallop Racer 2. So I guess, I don't know, somebody was like, Gallop Racer, that's kind of like Cool Borders, right? No, I'm afraid it's not. Legend of Mana, still a 500 yen game, which right now is probably on the neighborhood of like $3.75. So if you're a Legend of Mana fan, you want to get it cheapy cheap you're gonna to want to pick up the Japanese version fighting illusion with Andy hug on the cover it looks like Peter arts on the back uh, I used to be kind of a fan of um, you know k1 and kickboxing and stuff back in the day grand stroke or ground stroke oh this I could not pass Ore no ori ori. I love this game uh, fun little cooking game yes show it off Jim that was like my find of the day right there. It was 500 yen too. So that was going home with me. I love that game. I uh, initially played it on like a demo. It was on, uh, back in the day they had those PlayStation Underground Jam Packs. And they would always have a little import game, a little Japanese game that wasn't yet available. Or might never be available in uh, North America. Another one of those diet games. What the hell is that? 200 yen for Battle Arena Toshinden. Uh, Tomb Raider, which I had forgotten that those were published by Capcom in Japan. Um, but yeah, I was really happy to find Ore no Riori. If you've never played it before, I, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, here we have uh, what is essentially Rival Schools 2, the uh, Japan exclusive kind of sequel, because it's, it's Niketsu Seishin Nikki 2. Um, though it's really the same gameplay, and it's just got some more mini-games and a couple more characters. Uh, Namco Museum, what is it, 2 or 3? Got a lot of good stuff in there. Galaga, Dig Dug, etc., etc. Uh, Courier Crisis, Rockman X4. A very tiny little uh, selection of Dreamcast games. Four games! If you can believe it or not. Biohazard, Code Veronica. Uh, great game. And then that same weird wizard game again a lot of dating sims and stuff on the saturn and ps1 that i don't know what the hell uh, they are so you, you're gonna hear me a lot picking something up and just what the hell is this uh poyo poyo 2 though of course always classic and that's what 200 yen as well i set that aside because i was gonna pick it up 200 yen that's that's like o only a little more than maybe like a dollar u.s for like just an amazing puzzle game. Here we're coming to some boxed N64 and Super Famicom games. And this is where I, I started to feel like, okay, other people have been in here <laughs> like picking this stuff up. Because um, we're gonna see some kind of cool stuff here. Mario RPG, Dragon Quest, uh, Seiken Densetsu 3, amazing game, and Seiken Densetsu 2, AKA Secret of Mana, the DBZ games as well these are all pretty common 1500 for that now complete in box um, but a lot of what's left here is like horse racing and pachinko and like soccer and, and baseball games so I feel like a lot of the boxed Super Famicom games uh, someone's been in here picking through a lot of them um, Gambare Goemon 4 I believe for 2500 yen uh, which is a good deal on that, and that's a great game, and uh, pretty good shape, too, so I was happy to come across that. We got some Street Fighter 2 Elfera. Not sure what that is. Kind of looks like Maximo. And uh, um, we've got some Poyo Poyo. We've got Poyo Poyo 2 and Poyo Poyo Remix. This is the remix. Uh, and like I said, you can see there's like lots of horse racing, pachinko golf and other various sports titles 
Uh, GameCube games, though. Kind of a pleasant surprise. I don't really come across a lot of GameCube games uh, when I'm out hunting. Not sure why. I'm pretty sure it was a fairly popular console. 500 yen for Biohazard Remake. That's really good. But then we come to uh, Biohazard Last Escape. And that's 3,500 yen. That's uh, more expensive than I usually see it for. And then for 1,000 yen, probably about, I don't know, $7.50 right now, you can get yourself a nice uh, copy of Wind Waker. Puyo Puyo Sun, which is my favorite in the series. Or Puyo Puyo Sun 64, excuse me. If you leave out the 64, how are people going to know it's on the Nintendo 64? You got a Pilot Wing 64, Mario Tennis 64, Mario Kart 64, Super Mario 64, 64, 64, 64. And uh, you should just call everything Gombari Goimon 64 and Bomberman 64, DK 64. Uh, they should have just released a game called 64, 64. The Lone PC Engine game. Uh, Fire Pro Wrestling 2, that's that's a punch in the gut. You know, I like my PC Engine, and there's only one game? Who's Who's been in here? That's what I want to know. Is, am I having a negative effect on these things? Are people watching this and saying, Hey, I gotta go get those games before Jim gets there. I'm not even mentioning. There's Cosmo Gang, the video. There's Ushio Totora, kind of a fun action platformer. Gradius 3, for what looked like a mere 1,500 yen. One of my favorite games on the SNES, period. Big fan of that. But there's some Yu Yu Hakusho. There's some Dragon Quest. There's some Fire Pro Wrestling Darius Twin. And uh, for 1,100 yen, that's a yes. Uh, there's some Rockman Soccer. Darius Twin, good find today. Any shoot 'em ups are always going to be good stuff. But we got some PC Genjin. We got Final Fight. We've got some Oshabeti. Jikyo Oshabeti Parodius. Super Poyo Poyo. Uh, Kirby the Deluxe Pack, or whatever it's called. Rushing Beat. And, um, what is it? The Great Battle, uh, the original? Or is it Great Battle 2? Another Parody Stop. Magic Sword. You kidding me? 2,000 yen? 17 bucks. Gone Body Goemon 3 for like 2,000 yen. Good, good games. Uh, so I was really happy about that. So when the camera went away, I did indeed go grab a basket and start filling her up uh, fill her up with games but there's more stuff down here there's Rockman 7 great game more copies of Gradius 3 uh, which is a pleasant surprise this one here what is that price at like 2,000 yen or something more expensive than the other copy was but you put that down you look at this copy here and it's a thousand yen it's like half the price and to take a look at it, there's maybe like a little damage to it, but you know, nothing too severe for half price. I'll go with that. We've got Fatal Fury 2, The Lion King, Final Fight 2, Awesome, Bomberman, more Rockman 7s. Wow. So I was really pleased uh, with everything they had on the Super Famicom, and uh, I did pick up quite a few of those loose cards. Like I said, the box games were kind of meh, but they had a lot of loose carts. And we had some little strategy guys down here too, which is nice. Got some DBZ, some Yoshi's Island. Uh, so that's okay. But now we're moving on to the loose Famicom carts. And they had some good stuff here too. Adventure Island, Kunio-kun, uh, Niketsu Koha, Kunio-kun, Jaja Maru-kun. Always fun. Uh, and the prices weren't too bad either. There was a lot of stuff between like 300 yen and a thousand yen. There's Arkanoid, Xevious, Bomberman, Rockman 4 for 2,000 yen. It's actually not too bad for that. Super Dodgeball, a thousand. Some Kunio Soccer for a few hundred. Another Rockman 4. What do we got? Sky Kid. Rockman 3, and that's at 1,500 yen. And it was a super clean cart. Uh, nice and bright green, super clean, good label, everything. Just. Uh, Fantastic. Twin B, Top Gun, Rockman 2, all the greats, and you love them. Uh, but that's going to do it, folks. Thanks for watching. I needed to buy some games, so put the camera down and say good night, Jim.
Hello everybody, Jim here, and look at this beautiful spring day here in uh, Tachikawa, still in Tachikawa. Uh, I think I should have already published that uh, video I shot at the Sudagaya in Tachikawa recently. Uh, while I was there, I saw on Google Maps that there was actually a book-off location uh, not too far from that Sudagaya. It was probably about a 20-minute walk. Uh, so I, it was a really beautiful day. The weather was great, so I thought a nice walk over uh, would do me some good and uh, hoped to find some games. So here it is, the other book off in Tachikawa, because some time ago I made a video at the, uh, the book off Super Bazaar near the station, and that was really great. So you saw there, they've got all kinds of stuff, anime, this and that, and uh, movies, manga, of course, but... Uh, Getting started in a case that was marked as Hard Parts, which uh, is funny. You thought Hard Off was funny. Uh, labeling uh, a cabinet Hard Parts uh, because there's hardware in it. Uh, just these few random uh, retro games that were in the case. Uh, we're going to see uh, in just a minute that they actually did have some retro games for sale. So we're going to take a look at that. But first, before we get to all the retro stuff... Uh, they had quite a lot of modern stuff, too. A bunch of these marked as new. So, uh, this is one of the few book-offs that I've been to where they just get new games in stock. So, you can buy them brand new. So, that's cool. So, they had PS4, PS5, Switch, and uh, all that good stuff. And I actually did end up picking myself up a Switch game today. As we uh, take a quick looky-see here. Uh, this game right here for 2,700 yen. They had the uh, Klonoa uh, HD collection, so Klonoa Door to Phantom Isle and Klonoa 2. So I actually did end up taking that home with me. They got some other stuff here too, Kimetsu no Yaiba, whatever that's called. Uh, and then some of these here, you could go and uh, get them up at the register, I suppose. Um, I was tempted, I, I want to get the new uh, Fatal Frame uh, for a Switch, which I have not picked up yet. But uh, I didn't feel, because I just spent like a big chunk of money at the Sudagaya, picking up games there. So I was kind of being frugal, I guess, in this book off. Um, it was kind of a smaller hunt. So the only thing I picked up for myself in here was that Klonoa collection. As we're perusing some Switch games, Mario this and, and uh, anime that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, one of those people just listen to yourself talk. Vita games, all right. Some Gravity Days and some other various things. Some Fate, all that good stuff. So they had a bunch of Vita, 3DS, uh, that kind of stuff. Any book off you go to, pretty much, you're going to find uh, a lot of the more modern handhelds. In particular, 3DS games, they'll probably have a lot of. And Vita games, PSP, probably a lot of PS3 as well. Maybe even PS2. Um, that era of games, pretty much any book off, they're going to have a whole bunch. Um, but it's kind of hit or miss if you find retro games. As we're seeing some stuff like Kirby and Conan and you know, Harvest Moon, I think. All cool stuff. I'm not the most learned person uh, when it comes to handhelds because I've had you know a number of handhelds in the past. Game Boy, DS, 3DS, uh, Neo Geo Pockets and stuff, but they've never been like my main focus. we got some PS5 and PS4 stuff here. New stuff. Again, stuff that's kind of out of my scope of expertise. But we got PS3 games here. And they are divided by genre, which I always like to see because I can go straight to the fighting games. Like here, we got Street Fighter. We got JoJo, which I actually did just recently pick that game up on the Switch. And it's okay. Um, Tekken 6, awesome. Dragon Ball, one of those. Dragon Ball games like after the Tenkaichi Budokai games. I kind of checked out on the Dragon Ball Z stuff And of course some Naruto and some Dead or Alive all great um, Yeah, moving on. I mean I I kind of was under you know thought okay, that's that's gonna be it This is all they they really have uh, we got some Wii some GameCube um, I kind of wasn't anticipating finding like good like proper retro games um, but we're looking at some some stuff here on the GameCube. Battle Stadium D.O.N. Dragon Ball One Piece Naruto. Uh, Smash Brothers style game. 
or what do they call those, like Battle Royal games or something. Uh, Pikmin and some other various things, not too bad on the prices. Uh, 480 yen for Mario Golf Toadstool Tour, which I like a lot. I actually really like the Mario Golf games. 900 yen for Double Dash, which is nice too, though I haven't played Double Dash in forever. Like, I played the absolute living hell out of, um, you know, Mario Kart 8. Deluxe, whatever it's called. Um, so I thought that was it. But no, moving on, kind of like further down the aisle, we had some more stuff. We got some Xbox 360 games. Which I don't come across too many of those. And here's pretty cool. They had a copy of Catherine for 900 yen. So that's like maybe $7. And while having, you know, I got Catherine full body. And uh, that, you know, kind of makes the original obsolete. But still. That's a great game. When it came out, it was uh, kind of a breath of fresh air. Cool story, great graphics, atmosphere, and the gameplay. Really great. A uh, really fun puzzle game. At the time, I don't think too many people were thinking puzzle games. That's the next wave. Uh, but I am quite the Catherine fan as we uh, take a look. And now we move on to PS2. So they had some pretty cool PS2 and even a little bit of PS1. But as you can see here, lots of copies of Intelligent Cube. And a couple of uh, Intelligent Cube finals. Ace Combat 2 for 270. That's nice. I guess Intelligent Cube just sold like a million bajillion copies in Japan. Because I find it everywhere. And it's usually like a couple of bucks. Uh, some Kamen Rider. Uh, the Capcom Generation uh, Volume 2. With uh, Makaimura and I think Dai Makaimura. Uh, the uh, Ghouls and Ghosts and Ghosts and Goblins. And another Kamen Rider game. Kamen Rider Agito. Which, which one is that? That's a good question. Um, there are so many Common Rider games, and I honestly forget how to, you know, the differentiate between them. I have no idea sometimes. Or most of the time, really. Uh, some SimCity, some other various things. So they had a lot of just kind of like random PS1 stuff. 900 for the original Silent Hill. Which, uh, that cover is interesting, isn't it? Just a bunch of blood on a wall. That's gonna move some copies. I, I feel like they could have done better than that. Um, but as we move along, what do we got here? We got a lot of copies of Crash Bandicoot games. Uh, Crash 3, Crash 2, the original Crash. Uh, that's nice that a Western property like Crash Bandicoot, uh, became so popular in Japan. Uh, those old Crash Bandicoot, uh, commercials are just, like, classic. 270 yen! Like, two dollars for Star Ocean Second Story. One of my... Uh, absolute favorite RPGs on the PS1, actually. I really, really enjoyed that game uh, back in the day. Rayblade. And you might be asking yourself, what is Rayblade? I haven't the foggiest. I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, Tetris Plus. Pretty cool. Anything that says Tetris, it's probably going to be awesome. 270 and a, a $2 game is Tekken 3. Uh, 480 yen for Chocobo Racing, which is a decent game. It's, it's you know, it's no Mario Kart, but it's pretty good. And 270 for Dino Crisis. That's really good. Two bucks for a copy of Dino Crisis. And these Biohazard games, these are also 270 yen. 900 for Biohazard 2 Dual Shock, but that's okay. 900 for Namco Volume 2. It's got Xevious, it's got Mappy, uh, it's got other various games on there. So those are cool. A little old school Namco uh, arcade collections. 270 for Ultimate Battle 22. Boy, that game really broke my heart as a kid. I um, I imported the Dragon Ball Z games uh, when I was, uh, I don't know, how old was I? 13? 12 or 13? And uh, man, Ultimate Battle 22 was just a real kick in the balls. I, I, I imported it from this like little catalog my friend had. Uh, spent all the money I had to get that and the other ones and just playing that game after so much waiting and anticipation being such a massive Dragon Ball Z fan it was just so heartbreaking because it sucks really really bad um Bomberman Wars I, I guess that's maybe like a Bomberman strategy game I'm talking and not even mentioning those like Brave Fencer Musashi and Dragon Quest all kinds of stuff the Rurouni Kenshin RPG pretty cool in case you didn't know there's a Rurouni Kenshin RPG and a fighting game on the PS1. So, for all you Samurai X fans, we've got some Tenchu, we've got some Legend of Dragoon, Rockman 8, Greatest Hits version, and it's 900 yen. So, that ain't bad. Uh, honestly, that's probably what, like, uh, 
$7 game, a little less than $7 maybe, so that ain't bad. Some PS2 stuff, including Eco and uh, I think Onimusha in there. King of Fighters 11 for 1100 yen. So that's like a, I don't know, a nine, eight or nine dollar game. So that's pretty cool. And Guilty Gear Double X Accent Core Plus, it's uh, 270 yen. So if you got a couple of bucks in your pockets, get yourself some Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus. They just kept on adding on to those titles, didn't they? They just wanted those titles to be a paragraph at some point. Uh, look at all those Kingdom Hearts. There's a lot of those, and a lot of Tells, and a lot of Hack, and a lot of Dragon Quest, oh my god, and Final Fantasy. You would think those games were really popular in Japan. Uh, Densha Dego 3, not really for me, no thank you. Hajime no Ippo 2 for 480. Some uh, boxing for you, and Midnight Club, uh, the original Midnight Club. I remember when that game first came out. Uh, I mean, people lost their minds over it. Uh, Retoro Game, uh, that's what we're looking for. Um, but yeah, Midnight Club was a force back in the day. So we got some N64 games. We got tennis, we got this, that, and the other thing. Mario 64. This is kind of inconvenient. I have to kind of stretch, reach way up there. But there's Kirby, there's Poyo Poyo, there's Mario this and Mario that. Baseball. Baseball out the yin yang. And as I'm recording this, the World Baseball Classic is underway. We're expecting Japan to uh, take home that title again. Thank you very much. Uh, we got some Mario games, 480 yen. Ooh, Bomberman Hero, that's 270. That's pretty good. And some Mario Karts and all that stuff. I don't really care for um <laughs> how they have the games here. I got it. You know, you got to pull everything out individually. You know, it's fine when you're not filming a game hunting video and you got all the time in the world. But as I'm holding this GoPro in my hand, and anyone who's like held a GoPro without the little rubber thing on it, because uh, I don't have that, I just have the GoPro itself, you know those things get pretty hot. Uh, but we got some Rama, we got Mario games, I think we got Doraemon, Mario Collection, which is cool, we've got Kirby Superstar, some Mickey, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, can't complain. Got Odin Setsu 2, Fatal Fury 2, 270 yen, 480 for Yu Yu Hakusho 2. Good, good stuff. Rockman X2, 1500 yen. And uh, Cho Makaimura Bomberman Final Fight 2, 1500 yen. That is also not bad at all. Yoshi's Island, Dragon Ball Z, Ranma 1 Half, Street Fighter 2, Rockman X, the original for 900 yen. And some boxed games as well, including Gambare Goimon 3, really great game, Japan exclusive. That was the most expensive game I think I saw today, it was 5,400 yen, it's about 45 bucks for that game. And here's the test, 900 yen for a complete copy of Super Mario Kart. That's nice, If you know, that's one where you, you want to test out whether or not a, a store's prices are at least okay. See what they're charging for Mario games. If they're not overcharging for those, uh, then, you know, they're okay, I guess. Uh, we got some Famicom stuff here. I do like some of that. Some King Kong 2, some Door Door. This is a fun little game. Uh, some whatever the hell that is. <laughs> I always forget. Uh, Dragon Quest, good. Old school Nintendo soccer. And uh, Hector 87. With a cool sticker on the back. So whatever the hell Hector 87 is, and some Konami YY World, 1500 yen, fun game, for sure. What else we got? Keep going, Jim, just keep pulling them things out there. We got all day. Oh, there's Excite Bike, there's Magical Taruru Tokun, fun little platformer. Uh, the original Mario Brothers, love it. Super Mario Brothers, love that too. Who does not like some good old Mario Brothers? Ice Climbers, pretty cool. Captain Tsubasa. And Hokuto no Ken 2, a.k.a. I think that, yeah, yeah, that one did get a North American release, didn't it? Fist of the North Star on the NES. Okay, there you go. Uh, 1500 for Rockman 3, and it's a nice clean cart. And 480 for Commando. Uh, Sinjo no Okami, as it's called in Japan. Dragon Ball 480, a.k.a. Dragon Power on the NES. Can't go wrong with that. Some uh, Jaja Maru, or Ninja Kun, whichever one it is. Uh, and then a whole bunch of Game Boy games here. 
Um, I was thinking about, I'm going to pull these out individually, but then no, look, there's a nice little uh, visual for you. So there are a bunch of Game Boy games for me to dig through, which I eventually did. We got Mario 3, we got Dragon Ball Z, we got Dragon Quest 2, we got Dr. Mario, and Final Fantasy 3, 2300 for that complete. Good stuff. And we even got some nice boxed N64 games here. Not many, but some. And these boxes were in surprisingly good shape. Uh, so I was happy to see that. So I actually picked up a couple of these. Picked up some of their Super Famicom games. Some Famicom games as well. And uh, not Sentimental Graffiti, but this Lunar. I actually did end up picking up this Lunar Silver Star Story. And this Biohazard Code Veronica for 480 yen. Yes, I will take that all day. And some Virtua Cup. So there you go. And then a couple of little extra things there. But, uh, so yeah. Not a mountain of games, mind you, but uh, just enough for me to find some good things to send out to some nice people. So thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye. Hello, neighbors. Uh, Jim here, and uh, look at this. A uh, bright, beautiful, sunny day in the neighborhood of Asagaya here in Tokyo. Uh, so I figure what we could do today is we'll go for a short little walk, just enjoying the nice weather and um, just having a look around at the neighborhood. And then we will go to a local book off uh, where we will just see what they got, games and uh, whatever else they might have. Uh, because a lot of people, when they watch my game hunting videos, uh, I've seen quite a lot of comments saying that uh, kind of their favorite part of the video is just walking around, taking a look at uh, the surrounding area, uh, a typical Japanese neighborhood. Uh, so that's what we're doing today. So we're having a look around here at uh, Asagaya on what was a lovely spring day during Golden Week, and we've got, uh, what do we have around here, like um, medicine, and uh, we got Caesarea, which is a nice little, very cheap uh, family restaurant, so it's a good place to go uh, to just have a sit around, sit and have a chat with some friends. Uh, we've got some kind of like mom and pop clothing shops. This is sort of like a main drag in Asagaya. Uh, Asagaya, if you're uh, not aware, uh, the city of Suginami in Tokyo, um, kind of one of the more desirable areas uh, to live in. I think actually ranked number one most desirable area of Tokyo to live in, uh, especially if you have a family, because it's not quite as um, hustle and bustle as central Tokyo. But here we are in this nice little uh, kind of like shopping uh, district, kind of like a little pedestrian mall area, and looky what we have here. Uh, the object of our affections. It is the book off. Uh, so we're going to get inside and uh, take a look at some stuff. This book off didn't really have very many games, uh, so I figured uh, let's take a look at some other kind of cool things, including what we're looking at now, figures, and they've got themselves some Devil Man, which, uh, I think I watched back in the day, uh, or at least read some of the comics. It's not at all like that Rob Zombie song. And here we have some uh, Dragon Ball Z, including Broly and Goku and all that good stuff. And this is where some of my ignorance is going to shine through. Um, because despite the fact that I was quite the anime fan as a teenager, uh, Shin Gojira, which was a fun movie to see at theaters, uh, yeah, despite being a big anime fan as a teen, I'm really out of the loop now. Like, I've never seen any of the more recent Dragon Ball stuff. Um, I know Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and GT. I know the stuff that was out when I was a kid. I really don't know anything about Dragon Ball Super or any of that stuff. Uh, Pop-Up Parade, and it uh, looks like some Evangelion, like a character from Evangelion. Uh, yeah, I know about anime from sort of like my era back in the day, so I really don't know anything about uh, Naruto or One Piece, for example. Here, though, 
Uh, Macross. Some manner of Macross figure. Not a character I'm familiar with. But I guess this is meant to be like a little Christmas outfit. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I'm more familiar with like, you know, 80s and 90s Macross. This I thought was cool though. Kind of out of place. Spawn. Uh, ultra action figures spawn from the movie. I actually had some of these uh, when I was uh, a young lad. I, I might have had this exact spawn figure, but I definitely had the clown. The John Leguizamo uh, clown. Which, uh, he's not a demon in real life. Should he have been playing a demon in a movie? Uh, we got Bowser. We got this. I thought this was pretty cool too. Frieza. And it's a uh, Frieza Force thing, but it's his uh, spaceship, like his command ship. And that's pretty cool. So I guess on the back, it's, you know, the ship with a bunch of little figures. I guess you could do some sort of like, almost like diorama with Frieza, the, the Frieza Force or whatever the case may be. Uh, so that's pretty cool. We got some Millennium Falcon here. That's another thing where it's like, as a kid, I was a huge Star Wars fan. Like, had the figures, the games, all kinds of stuff. Had a big uh, Yoda, like, movie prop. Or not a prop, but like a um, a promo thing in my, my bedroom. But these days, I don't know the first thing about Star Wars. Hey, the unquestionable best Dragon Ball Z character, it's Goldo. Or Gurudo. Um, right? He's the best, right? Because, uh... <laughs> I don't know, I, was, uh, I thought that was kind of like fun, like an interesting character, because he could stop time and things. Uh, I, I thought that would be, you know, like more Dragon Ball Z characters to have like interesting powers like that, as opposed to just, you know, seeing who can punch harder. It'd be cool if, you know, someone shows up with something, throws this kind of a curveball. Um, we have a bunch of Gundam model kits here. Um, which, again, Gundam is, like, one of those anime properties where I know, like, a little bit. Like, at the time, uh, when I was watching it on television, stuff like Gundam Wing and Stardust Memory and, uh, the original Mobile Suit Gundam, all of that stuff was watchable on, uh, on television. Uh, but other than that, I don't know too terribly much about Gundam. Uh, if it's, in fact, a Gundam, like a literal Gundam, then I'll know what it is. Uh, but there are some people that are just absolutely massively obsessed with Gundams. I had some friends like that, where they knew every model of Gundam and and uh, what it was called. But uh, this this is more my speed. The God Gundam. That's a hell of a declaration, isn't it? This is the Gundam that created the universe or whatever. Um, and then these are... I had stuff kind of like this when I was a kid. These little mini Gundams, because I've never been much for model building. But when you gave me something like this as a kid, where it's like, hey, it's an SD figure, so it's like really easy to put together. Um, that's when I was like, okay, yeah, I can handle that. It's only got like, I don't know, 20 pieces. So sure, why the hell not? As we move right along. Uh, this place actually had some vinyl, which is cool, but I wasn't really here for vinyl. Uh, but it is always kind of like interesting. Like they had way more vinyl than they had like video games. I'm like, what the hell? Uh, so here we got some games, and they had a little tiny bit of retro stuff down here, but as we're gonna see, way, way, way overpriced. 3200 for a loose golden eye is insane. 480 for Panel Depon is actually okay. Uh, 480 for Poyo Poyo 2. Um, so that's like okay for that, but man, that golden eye was like crazy overpriced. That should be like a $10 game. Here we have this Ranma one half, one of the uh, Ranma fighting games. And how much are they charging for that? 2,700 yen. And that's too much for that. That should be like 1,500 yen. So, this is weird. Just a random little book off in the city. They don't have very many uh, retro games, but what they do have, they really didn't know how to price it. <laughs> uh, 2,300 for Captain Tsubasa 3. This is an extremely common game. This, the uh, Sailor Moon RPG, 9,600 yen. So something in the neighborhood of $75. That's quite the asking price for that game. Uh, Kirby 3, uh, 3,600 yen, but with a little knocked off, that's still like way too much for that. Dragon Quest V, super common game, and they want 2,300 yen for that. This is like higher than like Aki Haber prices, so I don't know what the hell's going on in here. Bomberman 4, another fairly common game, 3,200 yen for a boxed game. 
Um, which that's more more in line with like eBay or something. Super dodgeball. Great game. 3,900 yen though. Jeez. But uh, there's some money off. It's price off for damage or missing manual or something to that effect. And the original Super Mario Brothers. 2,700. But I will say this box was in really good condition. Surprisingly good. Uh, considering that game is older than I am. Uh, so someone took really good care of it. We have a handful of GameCube games here. And uh, that's that's nice. I, I myself don't collect GameCube games anymore. Uh, Crystal Chronicles, 480. So at least that's not overpriced. And we got some SD Gundam. Whatever the hell. <laughs> and uh, some uh, baseball, some Power Pro. Uh, a little bit of Bomberman Generations. Dance my Bomberman Generation. And Sonic Adventure to what is it, Battle? Which is awesome. And you know, the first two Sonic Adventure games I enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, Dark Echoes, Metroid Prime Dark Echoes. Something for the Mega Drive. No idea what the hell that is. And then a uh, big bunch of nothing for the Dreamcast. Uh, so you're breaking my balls, book off. Uh, we have a little bit of PS3 here. And uh, thankfully, divvied up by genre. So it's, you know, you can go straight to the action or the fighting games or the shooting or the rhythm. Um, so there's some cool stuff here. We got Oblivion, which I liked a lot back in the day. Odin Sphere for 1500 And that's a really good game, too. I do quite like Odin Sphere. And uh, the original Catherine for 270 yen. So that's like a $2 game. So that's very nice on that. Um, yeah, that's a little uh, a hint, a little tip I have for anyone that's going to come here and do some game hunting. At the very least, learn to read like a little bit of katakana. That way when you do come here and you're looking at a section like this, you'll be able to know right away where are the fighting games, where are the action games, where are the role playing games. Uh, because they're labeled as such. Or at least I like it when they're labeled that way. I prefer that over the uh, alphabetical order. Um, I like to just go to a fighting section and just see what do they got? What do they have? Uh, PS4 games here. Uh, a lot of stuff there. They got uh, the old cyberpunks and they got uh, the things you'd expect. The Call of Duties and the, I think like the Metal Gears or whatever the one with the guy from Walking Dead is. I don't know. I never played it so I have no freaking clue. Some Switch games. That's more my speed. I'm a Switch guy these days. Uh, still charging 4,000 yen for Breath of the Wild, eh? What the hell? Uh, Puyo Puyo Esports. In case you like your esports there. Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. So that's lovely. And uh, what the hell? Celsetto? What a, What the hell did that say? I don't know. Wasn't really paying attention. Boy, I'm so good at this, aren't I? Uh, Persona 5 Royal. 6,000 yen. Jeez. Um, and unless they're marked as being new, these are used games, so they're charging like retail on these new games on the Switch. Uh, but I guess you can just get away with that. Switch is uh, the hot seller still. Um, but we got some Marios, which I did like the Mario 3D collection. Super Mario U, we, like U Deluxe or whatever, I enjoyed that as well. Uh, the Kirby games. All the first party Nintendo stuff has been really great. This though, I thought was especially cool. They had the special edition of Rumble Fish 2 for 4,100 yen. And it got all that stuff in it, so that's cool. So I actually picked this up today. Was not expecting to find that. Uh, yeah, so I got myself some Rumble Fish 2 action. Yeah, just put that anywhere, Jim. Uh, so that's really cool. So if you want to know what I picked up today, that's what I picked up. They had Rumble Fish 2 special edition. And uh, the price was right on that. So, nice. I didn't have to go to Amazon to go get me some Rumble Fishes. Uh, which, Rumble Fish? Wasn't that a movie with Mickey Rourke? Or am I remembering that title wrong? Uh, and, and then we have a case here with just a handful of things in it. Some handhelds, some switches, a Zelda GameCube controller that I guess must be rare because it's really expensive. And some Famicom Minis. Which, uh, can you ever have too many of those? I mean, really. Um, so, you know, pretty cool stuff all around, but just, you know, it's always a nice day when it's, uh, sun shining and you can go to a book off and actually find something, uh, worth picking up. So thanks, everybody. Hope you had a nice time at this book off in the neighborhood.
of Asagaya. See you next time. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, welcome back. Jim here, and uh, would you take a look at that? Uh, it's another beautiful day in another beautiful neighborhood here in Tokyo. Today, we are in uh, the wonderful area of Koenji, uh, which, if you don't know, Koenji used to be kind of like a, like a hot spot, like a hangout uh, area really popular in Tokyo, uh, especially for its, um, I guess it had like sort of an international vibe, um, lots of uh, international like foods and, and bars and clubs and cafes and things like that, um, and it still has a lot of that stuff uh, these days, there's no shortage of places to go to, uh, you know, get some decent food, get something to drink, just have yourself a generally nice time. Uh, but today, since it was such a lovely day, and this is actually pretty close to where I live, I figured, you know what, why not, let's go, uh, let's go for a nice leisurely stroll on this beautiful day in this neighborhood, in case you're not getting the theme yet, and, um, go to a local book-off, which actually, uh, I started at Koenji Station, and the book-off was over near Shin Koenji Station. Which was a good, I don't know, maybe like 15, 20 minute walk. Uh, so, you know, again, beautiful weather. So I just said, you know, let's take a nice little stroll. Let's get the camera out and take a look at this nice neighborhood. Uh, which, in some ways, it's very typical of Japanese neighborhoods. Hey, who's hungry? Uh, we got some ramen shops, and that's always nice. Uh, you know, I thought I knew how awesome ramen was when I was a kid, because I would eat those, you know, the maruchan, like the brick of ramen, your brick o ramen. Um, well, coming to Japan and eating, like, proper ramen from a, a decent uh, ramen establishment, that's when you know you've really had the good stuff. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's just enjoy looking around on this uh, lovely day. Again, Koenji in some ways, very typical of a, a Tokyo neighborhood anyway. Uh, cause this is what a lot of them look like. A lot of stuff runs together. You're gonna have your little convenience stores, you're gonna have your ramen places. And, uh, lots and lots of apartment buildings. Uh, and the further away you get from the station, the more residential it becomes. Uh, this, I have no idea what's going on in there. But it looks like, some like they'd be open for business or something. Um, and then of course, everybody's standby, the favorite, 7-Eleven. Which actually, I'm not the biggest 7-Eleven guy. I mean, it's okay. But if I got a choice in the matter, I'm going to Family Mart. You know what I'm saying? Just uh, better chicken, better stuff overall. Um, but anyway, enjoy the look around the lovely, lovely neighborhood of Ko-N-G. Um, not to be confused with OMG. Although... You could say, OMG, it's Koenji, which is nice. Actually, across the street here, I noticed, um, maybe coming up, but there is a retro toy shop along this street that boasted that they had toys from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And I did not uh, uh, go in there today, uh, but I will be back later. Actually, I think that's it up there. All the windows were covered in, like, um, I think it was, like, newspaper or something. But they got Slimer at the door, like a big Slimer. So I'm gonna definitely go back there later since I know how close it is to Shin Koenji Station, which is only a couple of stops away from mine. Uh, but here we are coming up right next to Shin Koenji Station. Uh, here we have the Kokan. Or I'm sorry, not the Kokan, that's a different thing. Koban. In this case you don't know, Koban, also called police boxes. It's kind of like little tiny police offices dotted around the city. That way if you need a cop like right away for whatever reason, they're usually around. 
Although, honestly, you're not going to need them for much, most likely. Uh, but that was Shin Koenji Station, and we have here another... <laughs> I didn't stop in here either, but a bakery right next to a book off. That's a dangerous mix. Manga, games, and cake. Just hand me a loaded gun. Why not? Hey, it's a book off Express. What's so Express about it? I don't know. We're about to find out. I think it's really just a normal book off. Anyway... Uh, hey, look! Manga! Books! At a book off! Who'd have thunk it? Um, yeah, since there weren't really very many games in this book off, per se, and I'm usually a game hunting channel, you know, game hunting kind of guy, I said, you know what? I like a bit of old school manga. I think my audience does too, so let's just take a look at some. We got some JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. They had quite a lot of that. And, uh, you'll be happy to know all of this manga is 100 yen which uh i think right now it says 20 percent off oh for golden week it was 20 percent off for golden week that's nice um yeah 100 yen right now is like i want to say 75 or 74 cents us uh still ball run okay see this is um i i know like you know, I, I grew up teenager, late 90s, early 2000s, getting into manga and anime, like a lot of my peers did. But there is a lot of stuff that I'm kind of ignorant on, so JoJo is one of them. I know of JoJo, I've played JoJo video games, and I've seen the art and everything everywhere, and I have friends that really love JoJo. I don't know much about it, but I do like the, the art style. It's very cool, it's very stylish, very, um, it's very uh, distinct. It's, you're not going to confuse it with anything else. Um, we got some other stuff up here. You can see they've got no shortage of, like, Bleach and Naruto. Again, a series I don't really know anything about. Um, this stuff, Kimetsu no Yaiba. I know of this. Uh, I've never read it. I've never seen it. Um, but as many of you know, I am a teacher. And most of my students are kids and teenagers. And they, they come into class with all kinds of Kimetsu no Yaiba stuff. Uh, this, though, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, it's got to be Yu Yu Hakusho. Um, I like Yoshihiro Togashi manga in general and his anime. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho has long been uh, one of my all-time favorites. I like... It's got a nice kind of like small central cast. And now we get to watch me fight to get this back on the shelf. There you go. I found the technique. Um, but I like that. I like that that central, you know, four cast of characters. And they've got the supporting characters around them. But mostly you're following the story of just, well, I mean, one character in particular. And then, um, you know, the three other characters get their time to shine. And there's a lot of supporting characters. And uh, it doesn't... Um, I like that. I like a manga that, that really focuses and develops a, a small core group of characters. As opposed to having just tons and tons of characters everywhere at all times. Kinikuman! And yeah, I know I know some Kinikuman, a.k.a. What, what, what did we call it in the States? Like Ultimate Muscle or something? And we had the figures, the muscle men. Uh, but Kinikuman is hilarious. And I love all the references to old school uh, pro wrestling. Because back in the day, I was... Uh, I mean, I want to say when I was like... Between the ages of like 8 and 12, I was quite the pro wrestling fan. So I like the references to like 80s and early 90s wrestling. Now we got some games. Uh, our PS3 games here, luckily, are divided by genre. Which I've said this before, I like that. I like it when uh, we have a, a genre uh, distinction as opposed to just alphabetical. Uh, this, the Hokuto no Ken Musou game. Pretty cool. Basically, you can take anything... Make it Musou, and uh, it's going to be pretty cool. I mean, what haven't they done it with? They've done it with Gundam, with Zelda, with uh, Persona, to a certain extent. Although Persona, it's not like a full-on, like, 100% uh, Musou game. It's still an action RPG. Um, but it is, uh, you know, it had the, the treatment, so to speak. And then just the regular Musou. Which, honestly, I'm not, like, a fan, big fan at all of, like, the Dynasty Warriors games. But other Musou stuff, I like. Like I said, I like Hokuto no Ken. I liked uh, the Zelda Hyrule Warriors games. And uh, and uh, Dragon Ball Z, something or other. I don't know. I haven't played Dragon Ball Z games recently. 
Uh, yeah, Persona 5 Scramble. Oh, I don't remember what the title is in uh, in English, but the Japanese version was Scramble, and I enjoyed that quite a lot. Uh, here, what do we got? Are these... We got some fighters here. A sort of like a... Is that? Yeah, like some sort of waifu fighter that I'm not familiar with. Uh, that's another thing. Yeah, my fighters, like, I go back to, um, you know, old school stuff. Street Fighter, King of Fighters, etc. Um, but we got some DBZ. We got these Naruto games. Those sold like hotcakes. I'm not even mentioning the prices. 480 yen for this one. So that's in the area of like $4. So I suppose it isn't so bad. A lot of this stuff is not going to be too terribly expensive. We got the role-playing games here. So they got bunches and bunches of... Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, all that good stuff. We have this small selection of Wii games. This one, the Mario 25th anniversary, that's 700 some odd yen, that's cool. Uh, Okami for 480 yen. Uh, Basara, 480, which I did not play the, the Wii version of these. I don't, I don't imagine, like, it's hard for me to imagine like a Musou kind of game being especially fun on the Wii. Dragon Quest Swords, didn't play it. Naruto something or other, didn't play it. Biohazard 4 on the Wii, didn't play it. I don't even really like Resident Evil 4, which I think some people are insulted, but I'm just like a classic Resident Evil guy. We got some Wii U, some Poyo Poyo. I'm a bigger fan of the, uh, you know, the PS1 era Resident Evil games. And uh, what were those ones? Revelations and whatnot? I like those a lot. Uh, those are pretty cool. We've got some Vita stuff here, Adventure. I've learned that when it says Adventure, what they really mean is it's like... It's uh, more of a dating sim or something, a visual novel. We got some kind of Fate game here, which is cool. I've only ever played Fate's Unlimited Codes, but enjoyed it. Biohazard Revelations on the 3DS, speaking of. And uh, the Biohazard Revelations collection on the Switch I actually want to pick up sometime soon. Uh, play through those games again, because it's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, shooting, but of course on the shooting on the PS4 isn't what I want. Like, when I think shooting, I'm thinking of, like, shoot-em-ups, Gradius and R-Type. Uh, you pick up a shooting game on the PS4, it's like Call of Duty or something, which I don't give a damn about. Life is strange, too. Other cool stuff. We got, you know, some PS4 games here. Lots of role-playing games. That's nice. All the Kingdom Hearts games, which, again, I've only ever played the original. I have no idea what the hell's going on in any of the other ones. Uh, some of these more, like, anime-ish looking games. You'll have to forgive me. Uh, PS4, this is where my ignorance really shines. Although, Seiken Densetsu 3, uh, Trials of Mana, that's cool. That's, what is that, 2,800 yen? So that's like, oh, not much more than 20 bucks, actually. It's a pretty good deal. Some uh, Dragon Quest X, which I've never played because I'm not an MMO kind of guy. Uh, but I do love me some Dragon Quest XI, I'll tell you that much. Uh, we got Switch. This is something I'm more into now. We got some Persona 5... Uh, Royal, which I haven't played. I actually did not play Persona 5 at all. We've got some Hokuto no Ken. I guess it's... What the hell are you supposed to do with this? It's like some... I, I know you use, like, the uh, little Joy-Cons for movement and stuff. Maybe it's kind of like a fit game or something. Motion controls. Ugh. Not for me. No, thank you. I'm not a motion controls kind of guy. Uh, but what else we got here? We got all kinds of cool stuff, including this thing. <laughs> Whatever the hell that is. Come on, Jim, what? Come on, we're looking at that, man. You put that away so fast. Uh, Poyo Poyo Esports. In case you like your esports, I personally don't. Uh, and then something else. Something adorable with lots of, lots of little characters in it. There you go. My review of that game. It's adorable. It's got characters. There you go. Uh, <laughs> by passing PS5, I guess. Thanks, Jim. Uh, again, I don't know shit about PS5, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, Octopath, Traveler 2, stuff like that. They actually have some brand new games in here, which is, uh, cool. Because usually you think a book off, you're thinking used games, this, that, and the other. Uh, but no, they get some, some brand new this and that. And, uh, hey, speaking of, 2300 for the Biohazard Revelations collection, both games. Uh, and that's pretty good on that. We got the Capcom Fighting Collection. We've got some One Piece. I did my Capcom Fighting Collection video already. Um, they're still selling it for $2,900. So that's probably in the neighborhood of like $23. Which I say is still a good deal on that, considering all the all the games you got in there. If you haven't already, go watch my Capcom Fighting Collection video. 
Shameless self promotion. Some EDF. Very cool. Those EDF games are always like good, mindless fun. What is it, one of the Gal Guns? I know there's a there's a, a fan base for Gal Gun out there. I myself am not the hugest uh, <laughs> man. I'm not, you know. It's one of the weird things about me living in Japan is that I actually don't uh, watch uh, much anime or even really like modern anime waifu stuff. Uh, Little Witch Nobita or whatever it's called. I think I saw Happy Console Gamer mention that and uh, said it was pretty cool. I've yet to try it though. But yeah, Revelations. Unveiled Edition. Unveiled Edition. Okay. Um... Yeah, I didn't pick that up. I was going to get, uh, where was I going to get it from? I think I was going to get it on uh, Amazon, or I was going to get the digital version. I was pretty sure they have it just digitally. You can get it on the cloud. What can't you get on the cloud these days? Uh, anyway, that's the book off in the beautiful neighborhood of Koenji. And just look at this. What a day, huh? Not a cloud in the sky. Uh, just absolutely beautiful. So I went back to uh, not get a cake. Even though I really wanted to. No, we're going to go to Shinkoenji. We're going to get on the train. We're going to go home and enjoy the rest of our day in our beautiful neighborhood. But for all of you, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And come back next time to our little neighborhood here. Goodbye. Mad Panic Gaming. Brutal. What's up, everybody? Jim here. Welcome back for another exciting game hunting video. Today, I was in the neighborhood of Tachikawa, and I really wanted to go to what I thought was going to be an awesome game shop here, uh, loaded with games to dig through. As it turned out, though, it was actually a trading card shop, uh, so that falls on me. Didn't quite do my research well enough, so I was a little bummed about that, but I was not going to waste a trip. And it was a beautiful day after all, so I decided to head over to the Book Off Super Bazaar, which was right near where the card shop was. I haven't been to this place in about six months or so, but I remembered it being loaded with lots and lots of games, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to dig through all these games in this Book Off and see if we can come away with some awesome deals. So let's do just that. Here we go. All right, let's get started uh, with a sign that lets you know you're in the right place. It says Retro Game, in case you can't read Katakana. Uh, they had a bunch of these brand new uh, game compilations. I think it's all like Jalico and Data East stuff. And we had some of these, one of these knockoff consoles, which they're selling for like 10 bucks. Uh, I don't necessarily think I want that. And this AV Famicom for over 14,000 yen. Uh, even though the box is ratty, but it was complete. And we got a bunch of boxed Famicom and Super Famicom games in this case. And the, the prices are a little confused. Although I see that copy of DuckTales back there waving its tail feathers at me. Loves me some DuckTales. But uh, a lot of the games that were actually in this case, uh, some of them were actually priced at about what you would see like on the shelf as well. I think they just, this is kind of like spillover. But they've got Rockman 5 in there, Twinbee. Some Kunio-kun, some Jaja Maru-kun, Mario 3, uh, all that good stuff. And these boxes all look like they're in pretty decent shape. You can see a lot of them, though. They have a yellow sticker just above the price sticker, and that'll tell you if there's some damage or uh, something missing or otherwise. Uh, some good Famicom stuff here, including some Turtles, some Rockman, some Chippendale Rescue Rangers, which I absolutely love, and Mad City which is actually the better Famicom version of Bayou Billy and a Famicom disc system as well. So that's pretty cool. And a handful of disc system games for it. Yeah, uh, Bayou Billy, kind of well known for being uh, way too hard, but uh, Mad City is much better. We got Goemon. Uh, we've got Violinist of Hamon, which is a great game. 
I actually put it in my top 10 Japan exclusive Super Famicom games. Gradius 3. Uh, also, always a joy to play. But they had a bunch of box Super Famicom games here, including three copies of uh, Super Bonk 2, more Gradius, more Goemon, Dragon Ball Z, Super Bomberman. All kinds of good stuff. Uh, that's something that's worth doing. Ooh, Papua Kun for 5,900 yen. That's a really good one, another Japan exclusive. Um, but that's maybe a reason you're going to want to learn. If you're going to come to Japan to do some game hunting, uh, learn maybe a little bit of katakana or a few kanji. Just learn how to spot the games you want uh, just by reading the spines, because in a lot of these game shops, that's what you're going to have to do. We got some Rockman X. We got some Mickey Magical Adventure 3. Some Sailor Moon. Beautiful game, and, oh, Macross, Scrambled Valkyrie, amazing game. Uh, but yeah, priced at a premium these days. And Lady Stalker, I haven't done that in years. Final Fight, Gundam Wing, Endless Duel back there. Uh, was going to pick it up because that's a pretty good price, but I saw I was missing the manual, uh, so I decided to pass on that one. We've got some Rockman X2, which is beautiful. And so even some uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth, which is cool, even though it's not as good as the Saturn game. Even some uh, some Darius, some Super Darius. So that's very good. And Loose Carts as well. And Wild Guns for over 54,000 yen. That puts it right at like 400 bucks. Not a cheap game by any stretch of the imagination. We've got some other good stuff here. Like a whole little Dragon Quest area. So that was kind of cool. Even though Dragon Quest games really, you know, shouldn't warrant they don't they're not that expensive. Uh, some of those uh, Pokemon games, I know they can get real expensive, and they're very popular. Even though I myself, I've never even played a Pokemon, so I'm not exactly the uh, foremost master of that. But some Dodon Pachi, Daiojo, Black Label, EX, etc., etc., a really great game. But again, pretty pricey, and some of these uh, N64 games as well. Uh, which most of them, again, uh, I th should have been on the shelf, probably. Uh, Shinmu is back there. Uh, who knows why? It's a common game. But we got Sakura Wars Columns 2, which is a lot of fun. Alien Trilogy Crows, which is an expensive game, but an awesome game anyway. Dodon Pachi, amazing game. A trendsetter in the world of uh, them bullet hell shooters, so that ain't bad. Uh, but we had some cool PS1 stuff in there, Saturn, etc. And some 32X games, including my favorite 32X games. Uh, well, that's not 32X. I'm thinking Knuckles Chaotix. There's Sonic and Knuckles. There's a little bit of uh, Neo Geo in there as well. Some Mega Drive. And for <laughs> 45,000 yen, a PC Engine Duo R. Um, wow, what a case! All right, now we come to the real bulk of this video, starting off with uh, a modest selection of Sega Saturn, but they have the best Sega Saturn game ever made. Street Fighter Real Battle on Film. Van Damme was in Street Fighter before Mortal Kombat. How do you like that? Uh, Capcom Generations 2 with all of the uh, the different ghouls and ghosts arcade conversion. That's pretty cool. And uh, for 2228, uh, Macross Do You Remember Love? And it's complete. There's a little bit of damage to the disc, uh, but nothing. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, Gonna be able to live with, uh, but we do have some pretty cool Dreamcast games here as well. We got Shinmu, which is ever present. Comic Party, which I reviewed years ago. That game is lame. Uh, and Capcom versus SNK, complete with spine card in great shape for thirteen nineteen. Can't go wrong with that. Why do they, they always have so many copies of the Shinmu games? Uh, Co Veronica with the cool sleeve. Uh, but better yet, my favorite version of Biohazard 2, the original anyway, uh, the Dreamcast version, Biohazard 2, I think it's called like Value Plus or something. Kind of a weird uh, way to title it, but that's my favorite version. It's got all the cool extra bonus modes and unlockables available, and I like playing on the Dreamcast. Uh, we got some Kirby, 
and something else. It looked kind of like Advance Wars or something on the Game Boy Color. Well, then it couldn't be Advance Wars, could it? Uh, this I thought was awesome. Wario Land, 1800 yen, and it is complete and in really, really good condition. Uh, you don't come across complete games like that for that cheap that often these days, so that was surprising. And for 1,045 yen, literally like $7, a complete near mint Yoshino Panapon. Uh, which, if you don't know what that is, it's the Japanese version of Tetris Attack. And that is very cool. Uh, we had some GameCube games as well, though GameCube I'm uh, not so hot on these days. There are some uh, classic GameCube titles to be sure. But it's just not a console, uh, you know, a lot of people collect for. I don't collect for it myself. This is cool, though. The link cable for your GBA, and then you get all those puzzle games. You get your Dr. Mario and your Tetris Attack. And there's one other thing in there. It might have been Kirby's Avalanche or something. Um, but that's pretty cool. But yeah, like Dream... Uh, not Dreamcast. Uh, Dreamcast is amazing. But GameCube uh, doesn't exactly float my boat these days, if you know what I mean. Um, but there you go. Got some Mega Drive games, and they are complete. As is usual, most Mega Drive games you'll find will be boxed, just because those clamshell cases are sturdy. But, uh, they're usually more expensive as well. This, I thought, was pretty cool. 3,137 yen for, uh, I think the original Turok. I'm pretty sure the sequel is called Violence Killer. Which is pretty cool, kind of redundant. But I like that a lot. And then we got a bunch of boxed N64 games here as well. But a lot of repeats. Plenty of Mario Tennises and Mario Parties. Uh, we got, and I, like, no lie, just an endless wall of loose cards. So we got some Sonic games here. Again, 2,500 Mega Drive games. Not getting any cheaper, and that's too bad. We also got Dai Makaimura. We've got Street Fighter back there, Champion Edition. And a lone Virtua Boy game. Uh, again, not something I get a lot of requests for. Street Fighter 2 Dash Plus Champion Edition, uh, aka just Turbo, I think. That's about uh, 16 bucks or so. And these uh, little Game Boy game protectors, thank goodness they had them. You can't ever have too many of those, am I right? Coming along now to some boxed Famicom games. Uh, with all these Namco ones, those are the easiest to spot. And again, very similar to the Mega Drive games. They have those nice, sturdy plastic clamshell cases. So they're going to be just fine for the next million years. Uh, the original Gombati Goemon, I think, it's 3228. Uh, I don't think I've ever played any of the 8 bit ones. It looks like it's a little RPG there, which is fine, but uh, I certainly. Like my Goemon platformers on the Super Famicom, that's uh, definitely my preference. And we got some boxed Famicom games here as well. We got Fighting Golf, uh, which, uh, as you know, the title might have you informed, it's not like Happy Gilmore at all. Uh, and Famicom Ultima, which these are kind of cute. <laughs> they just take the Ultima series, give it some anime look to it. That's funny, like the opposite of what happened when you would uh, get Japanese games going over to the U.S. They would always want to ditch the anime look, but uh, vice versa in Japan. Something like Ultima, not very anime friendly, but they found a way! Um, we've got some more stuff here, including something. I'm told it's 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 excellent, that thing, whatever that was. Um, and uh, what else we got here? We got some Mahjong, exciting stuff, baseball. Can't, uh, very unambiguous that game. It's baseball, and it's tennis, and it's F1 race. And these, these games, this is, a, like, a miracle that these boxes are still intact. Uh, and some Final Fantasy 3. Uh, for all you Final Fantasy enthusiasts out there. Actually, I used to collect those more or less just for the box art, because it's really beautiful artwork. Uh, Tag Team Pro Wrestling. On the cover, I think we got, like, Terry Gordy and... Like Hawk from the Road Warriors? I don't know. Uh, but that's cool. Uh, again, these boxes, no small miracle that they're still intact after 
30 something to 40 years. 2300 for Dragon Quest IV. Uh, what a beautiful box that game has. And Lord have mercy, the games, the endless sea of games. Transformers, yeah! The mystery of Convoy. I'm sorry. Anyone who's ever been watching this channel for a while, you know I have to I have to say that every time I find that game. Uh, Ninja Ryu Kinden 2, pretty good shape as well. 1800 yen. Uh, great game. Any of the original Ninja Gaiden trilogy is always uh, gonna be a good time. And uh, popular game as well. Anyone that wants Famicom games, I can usually send them a Ninja Ryu Kinden and expect no complaints. Uh, we got some more boxed uh, Super Famicom stuff here, including Sailor Moon R. That's over 4,000 yen. That's a decent beat em up, as a matter of fact. And Sailor Moon S. This is one of the uh, puzzle games, though. 2,300 yen. Might be Hua Hua Panic or something like that. There are a bunch of Sailor Moon puzzle games, in case you didn't know. Uh, and then this one, I mean, who could pass on All Star Dream Slam? Just look at that. Eat your heart out, fellas, for the ladies of the Dream Slam. Who's that? Bull Nakano, Asia Kong, or Aja Kong, and uh, Akira Hokuto. Uh, so yeah, sexiest damn wrestling game ever made. Uh, just behind, I don't know, what a backyard wrestling? I have no idea. Um, bunch more games here, bunch of copies of Puyo Puyo, Super Mario RPG. That's all well and good. Although, uh, Super Mario RPG just about to get its re-release, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, 480 yen for this Street Fighter 2. Uh, missing the manual, though, uh, which is too bad. Another bit of advice for you. Uh, learn enough Japanese to, like, read labels. <laughs> so you can, you know, know what, uh, what is and is not included. We got the Super Donkey Kong series here, a.k.a. Donkey Kong Country. 1591. And that ain't bad because this is complete and it's in really good condition. Uh, and again, that's a you can never go wrong with some super Donkey Kong. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Super Butoden 2, 1591. Again, in immaculate condition and with conversion rate, that's that's right around ten dollars. So that ain't bad. Thirty-two hundred though for Super Butoden 3. I have no idea why. Um, you know, not a, not a uh, you know, uncommon game or anything. Definitely not more uncommon than uh, Super Toten 2, I would think. Uh, but what can you do? And looky here, we got a whole lot of Super Famicom games. I want to take a look at some of the better ones here. 1500 for this Gambare Goemon 2. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, Super Famicom exclusives. Uh, Kirby's Superstar or Super Deluxe. Get a whole bunch of fun games in there. Uh, Sailor Moon S. Uh, with some kid's name on it, so it's 480 yen. Again, that's another one of the uh, puzzle games, which I'm less interested in. The beat-em-ups and the fighting game. Uh, speaking of, Sailor Moon S uh, is the fighter, 1800 yen. Not a great fighter, mind you, but I, I heard it was like modded, and they're playing it at like fighting game tournaments now, which is interesting. And the original Sailor Moon bundled with the manual, and it's only uh, like 1200, 1228 yen, so that's like... I don't know, eight bucks, seven bucks, something like that with exchange rates. So that's a good deal on that one. The Sailor Moon games, for whatever reason, are getting a little bit pricier these days. Excuse me while I fiddle with this. I'm, a, I'm such a great cameraman, aren't I? Uh, I'm setting this stuff aside, though, so that I can uh, hang on to it. I'm going to want to come back for that later. Uh, we got a bunch of copies of Yoshi's Island, Rockman Soccer. I'm a huge Rockman fan, and I don't like soccer at all, so 
Like 50-50. And Rockman X2. Again, with some kid's name on it. Thanks a lot, pal. You lowered the value of my games. Coming down to just about the wire now. Just a few more Fox Super Famicom games and some odds and ends, including a really ratty, ratty box on this Fatal Fury. Uh, so I had to say no thank you for that. I don't like stuff where the box smells like smoke and is all torn to pieces. Um, this is really cool, though. The Caravan Shooting Collection by Hudson. So it's got, I think, Star Force, Star Soldier, and Hector 87. Uh, so that's pretty cool. 4,100 yen, that's actually not such a bad deal on that. Uh, so yeah, I dug and dug and dug. Uh, after I put the camera away, I mean, you see, like, it's an endless wall of games. I didn't want this video to be five hours long. We have some consoles here, which I didn't know what the hell they were up to with these consoles. 10,000 yen uh, for this PlayStation with, I think, had no controllers. So it was uh, discounted, so that's all well and good, but even at like half that, it's like, what? A PS1 with no, there's millions of these things, they're not exactly uh, hard to come by. Uh, this one here, what is that, 5819, and it doesn't have the power cord or the AV cable. What are you doing? You were on a kind of a roll, book off, and then you, you I come to the consoles and you're horrifying me. Orange Spice GameCube with nothing on it. <laughs> I sound upset. I'm really not that upset. Um, PS1, again, with no AC adapter and a, a proper PS1, the real PS1, mind you. Over 7,000 yen for that, though, like 50 bucks for it. Um, and then we got some N64s and this. I didn't even want to look, but here's a Mega Drive, and it's 20,000 yen, which put it around probably around 150 bucks. And it's a Mega Drive. Come on. How uncommon are these things? There's millions, literally millions. And uh, this Hori Stick for PlayStation, which is pretty cool. Uh, 2710. And you can play all your PS1 fighting games with that cool stick. Or you can play your PS2 fighting games with it as well. Why not? Uh, and the last little stop here. Uh, let's play. Okay, well, don't mind if I do. It's a sale. So again, a bunch of stuff that was just like overflowing. I mean, you saw the wall of games. They got more than they can uh, they can handle, more than they know what to do with. So they got a bunch of stuff here. They're marking it either as like 100 yen, which right now is like 68 cents as I record this. So for 68 cents, you could have this. Shin Nihon Pro Desu. With some Great Muda and some Jushin Thunder Liger. Two of the all-time greats. You can get... Uh, 50% off on this Bomberman, Super Bomberman, is that 3 or 5? Whichever one it is. Whatever it is, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, I see a sticker that says 50% off, and I just go for it, man. Uh, and this Super Toten, 480, 50% off. Which, you know, these, I mean, again, it's like spillover, but also these, uh, some of them, upon closer inspection, uh, they were a little bit grimy, some of them a little dirty. Uh, but that's nothing you can't fix with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol. Uh, so like 270 yen for some of these, 100 yen for some of them. Um, so some of these as low as like, yeah, like 68 cents up to maybe like $2. Uh, and that ain't bad if you're just looking for something to uh, play or have in your collection. If you're a loose cart kind of guy. I know these days lots of people, they like, st they like their boxes, they like their manuals. Um, but for the rest of us, we got loose cards. But hey, what did I get today? Let's take a look. We got Macross, Do You Remember Love for 2228. That's a fantastic game. 
and complete with spine card. We also picked up a copy of Capcom vs. SNK for $13.19. Again, complete with spine card. Very nice. We got this copy of Sailor Moon on the Super Famicom with manual for $12.28. That's a good deal on that, if I don't mind saying so. Complete copy of Wario Land. Near Mint, really good looking game. And we also picked up that copy of Yoshi no Panapon for $10.45. Again, near mint, and for a price like that, I could not pass on it. And then on the uh, slightly more expensive side, I did pick up Chippendale Rescue Rangers for $35.91. A fantastic game. Somebody's going to be very happy to receive that, I have to imagine. And for 2300 yen, this copy of Mad City. Again, the Japanese counterpart to Bayou Billy. A better game because it's not so soul-crushingly difficult, making it a good game, as a matter of fact. So there you go, those are my best finds of the day. How did I do? Let me know down in the comments. Had myself uh, quite a fun time digging through a mountain of games at this book off Super Bazaar and uh, hanging out in Tachikawa. Uh, so that's it for this one, everybody. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs>